Internet land, welcome, there we go. Welcome there too. Um, so just a couple of announcements this morning. I just wanna really rejoice and praise the Lord for those who were able to serve last night. Uh, Halloween outreach still took place. We did a lot differently, a lot more bathroom cleaning than in the past um, and a lot more uh, caution in how we handed out our trick or treat for our guests and tried to share love. Um, but it was, there were still over 500 people that crossed our path, I think last night. And uh, which is, um, for many, that's a ton of people for Ledgelon. That's like half the normal number, but we are grateful and gracious uh, for all you who could serve and to this body who bought the supplies, the juice boxes and granola bars that we handed out. And we pray um, above all else, it's really not about the snacks because you can get snacks at the store anytime you want, but that, that the Lord would be glorified that for those who serve. Some of you were here the entire time and I appreciate all your efforts. Even if you were here for five minutes, I appreciate all that you did. See barber.com. If you want to you know, follow along, it's kind of has a outline for the service and you're welcome to check that out. And it also has a place where you can RSVP and let us know you're coming. Um, and that's there for you. And another reminder is uh, high noon, uh, high noon on zoom Thursdays. Uh, you're welcome to join us in a time of um, prayer and just it's about a half hour long just praying for needs of the body and praying for one another um, you're welcome to join us on zoom just ask her for the information we're also i think it looks like a lot of the leaves are going to be down if you'd like to join in in an impromptu uh raking party next saturday um we'll be outside raking leaves lord willing if the weather's not bad if you already have plans, it's impromptu. So don't worry about it. Like enjoy your plans and do what you were going to do. But if you are interested in, in chucking some leaves in a bag, um, feel free to come and join in the fun, fun. Um, and uh, let me know if you have questions, actually, let me know if you're coming. So I just, in case something, in case the weather's bad, I can let you know if it's not going to happen. 8am. Sorry. Thank you. Eight to 10. Just a quick We'll do what we can. We're not going to get every leaf ever invented, um, but we will do what I can to, to rake it up. So Amanda, um, Amanda Dyer is going to share with us a ministry highlight of shoeboxes, and she'll be joining us in the other room. Good morning, everyone. It seems kind of funny not standing in front of everyone out in the sanctuary. Um, Anyways, I'm here to talk about Operation Christmas Child, or as we sort of usually call it, packing shoeboxes. Um, it is that time of year, and um, if you are interested or um, would like to participate in that, I have information about that for you. Um, the Samaritan's Purse is who uh, sponsors this, Operation Christmas Child, and it's so that you can provide God's love in a tangible way to children in need around the world, and together with the local church world, worldwide, share the good news of Jesus Christ to um, all children. Um, there are shoe boxes. Sarah, thank you for putting all the materials out. There are shoe boxes that you can bend and fold and put together, as well as labels. There's a shoe box label. Um, Looks like this. Oh, okie doke. Um, that needs to be filled out. It tells you the ages of whether you're doing a boy or a girl and the ages. You're going to check that off. You're going to put that inside your box. Um, so there are supplies in the sanctuary as well in the foyer. If you want to um, get a packing slip that will track your box you do that online um, and you would pay the nine dollars for the shipping online as well and then they give you a code and as those boxes are shipped you can track where it's going to if you would like um, there's a lot of items that you that you know, the typical items that we send in school supplies kinds of things small toys um, Hygiene items, however, no toothpaste because it's considered liquid. Um, no shampoo, anything that's liquid is not allowed. Um, socks, bandanas, t-shirts, hats, sunglasses, underwear, those things are good. Um, blunt scissors are good. 
They ask that you not send anything that is used. They ask that you not send anything that is um, considered warlike, weapon-like, um, which if you go looking for things for young boys, it's really kind of hard to find things that don't have superheroes just plastered all over them. But anything's about fighting or weaponry, uh, they're asking you not to send. And actually, if you put those things in, when it gets to the big packing center, the distribution center, they take them out anyway. So it's not like they're gonna get anywhere. They're not gonna be used. Um, so the, at the packing center, they also send, they also in, insert a um, book in there, a little book called The Greatest Journey. And it's a 12 lesson Bible study course for the children to be following. Um, you can also pack a box online. If you don't wanna go out shopping, you can go to the Good Samaritan um, website and you will see Operation Christmas Child under their missions. And you can pick out items right then and there to pack a shoebox. If you pack your own shoebox, you tend to be able to put more things in it. They sort of limit you to one thing from this category, one thing from that category, one thing from another category. Um, candy, that's another thing I should have mentioned. You cannot send candy. We used to always send candy, all the leftover Halloween stuff. Um, no candy, no food. And that includes like fruit roll-ups or fruit funds. Um, no, no vitamins, you know, chewy vitamins. The kids can't, you can't send those either. And of course, anything that's breakable or glass. The pickup week or the, the drop-off week is going to be in November. And um, it will be the Sunday before Thanksgiving. I believe that's the 22nd of November. They actually have a full week. Um, but I can't do it during the weekday and there's nobody on the island who's doing it this year as far as I know. Um, last year there was a place on Christian Ridgewood, Ridge, Christian Ridge in Ellsworth, which was very convenient. Otherwise I'll be taking them to Blue Hill. If you would like me to take your box, I will pick them all up on the 22nd. In the past years, as people have finished them and brought them in, um, they've just left them. We probably could leave a pile here in Sanctuary Hall as well as in um, Sanctuary Hall as well as in Fellowship Hall, the Sanctuary. And I will make sure that they all have um, labels correct. I will check them all and I'll make sure they all have the elastic band on them before we take before I take them up. I'm more than happy to do that. If you have any questions about how to pack, usually I sort of hand everybody this two or three page uh, directions. <laughs> Um, and maybe what I'll do is I'll leave this with Sarah and Sarah could at least make a copy for each space so people can look at it. You can also email me. Um, I, my email is in the um, school direct, I mean the school directory. Yeah, we have one of those too, in the church directory. And I'm in the school directory too, but the church directory, um, you can call me um, if you want to write down my email or it's also on this that Sarah will make a copy of. In the past, we have, you know, we've taken up to 200 boxes and um, it's gotten less and less each year, but that's okay. You know, to me, it uh, one box, two box, 20 boxes, 50 boxes, whatever people are willing to do, um, I'm willing to take. If you, are not interested sort of, or cannot get online or shop for a box, but would like to help out with shipping co costs. Um, Linda has always sent a check to them um, from our church, from anyone who wants to contribute to shipping. There are a lot of people across the country who can put a box together, but the $9 per box gets to be just a little bit much for them. Um, so they rely on people who are going to donate shipping money. And there are some big businesses that do that as well, but there are also people who just send a check through their church to um, cover some of the shipping costs. So however you can help out is wonderful. Um, I thank you. And um, I hope that the children that we reach out to and touch are blessed by our, our doing so. Thank you.
Let's stand together, if you are able, for the reading of God's word. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. And let us pray. God, you are so good. God, you are faithful. You are worthy of our praise, God. Thank you that you are here. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you meet our needs, Lord. Thank you that there's nothing we can do to make you love us any more, and nothing we can do to make you love us any less. Your love is unconditional. Forgive us when we love conditionally, God. Forgive us when we are unfaithful to you and unfaithful to others, God. Forgive us when we put other things before you, God, when we seek temporal things, when we seek worldly things for joy, for security, for um, comfort and peace, God. You alone bring those things. You alone provide because you are faithful. God, you are sovereign. God, you are love. You are truth and peace. God, we, we think of those things, God, and um, we pray that you would help our hearts to enter with thanksgiving, to enter your courts with praise. God, may we have grateful hearts. May we have worshipful hearts directed to you alone, God, for you are faithful and you are worthy of our praise. God, thank you for being here. Thank you that we can be here. Thank you for those who are tuning in online, whatever time it is. Um, and thank you for technology, God. Thank you for health. And thank you that you reign, God. You are authority. You are trustworthy, God. You are over all. And because of all, God, we worship you with our hearts and in our tithes and offering. And as we listen to your word be spoken and taught for your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. As we sit and uh, reflect on a song that we'll, that Kevin is going to play, um, hopefully you can catch the lyrics. I, I find that I probably know uh, a lot of songs, and maybe you don't know all of them as well, and I'm sorry for that, but I pray that um, this particular song is a reminder of God's faithfulness, of his uh, steadfastness, and that we, he is trustworthy. So this song is called You Are Faithful by Carrollton. And um, following that song, uh, Tim and Michael will both come and um, lead us in a time of prayer requests. So maybe even as you listen to the song, you think of something that you're just wrestling with or that you want to trust God with more. And uh, perhaps it will remind us of things that we can be lifting up in prayer. So you want to press play on that, Kevin? Might need to turn up a hair. It's another day in a worn out life With nothing lost and nothing in And I can't make it on my own And that I know will never change so my hope is in you, and my trust is in you, because you have never failed. You are faithful to provide. You are always by my side, even though I cannot see. Where you're leading me, oh, I am yours and you are faithful. 
So why do I still try my way? When all it brings is doubt and fear Lord, help me see, help me believe In you alone I persevere You are faithful to provide You are always by my side even though I cannot see where you're leading me, oh, I am yours and you are faithful. So my hope is in you, and my trust is in you, and you have never failed. No. So I will lay down. All of my fears now Cause you will never fail And you are faithful to provide You are always by my side You are faithful to provide Lord, you are always and even though I cannot see where you're leading me, oh, I am yours and you are faithful. Lord, I am yours and you are faithful. I am yours and you are faithful. Good morning, everybody, and you guys in there. This part, of course, as we worship the Lord, we worship from his scripture. We worship in song, but we can also worship in prayer. So I'd like to take this time to take any prayer requests. Michael, I think you're probably in position to handle that side. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I'd ask now, is there anyone who has a, a prayer request that they'd like to cover that will be brought on into the week in my prayers. Could, could I just get a first name? Okay, good. Thank you. That's right. Well, yeah. I, um, yeah, always good to remind me of stuff, everything. All right. Uh, so uh, Leanne has uh, sons that have, have been tested positive for COVID. They haven't been tested yet. Uh, they haven't been uh, found with COVID, but certainly keep her, their her sons, Leanne's sons, in your prayer for COVID. Anyone else? Jonathan? Uh, 
kind of attach a prayer request on to a praise um, Ricky Clark, who's uh, in Maryland's uh, next door neighbor for uh, many years, and, and took a lot of time to help her in her in her home. Uh, moved uh, a couple of weeks ago, about a little over a week ago, and our prayer had always had been that that she could stay in her home, and uh, and over the last nine days, uh, she's received just just enough care so that she's doing well there. And uh, her family is stepping up. She has a cleaning person that has been very kind. And um, so Marilyn is doing well. And we just pray that that continues, that the Lord will be with her and, and keep her safe there and keep her company. And I didn't ask you. So we'll also pray that Marilyn will forgive you. <laughs> well, he didn't ask her beforehand. Oh, sorry. Oh, so you got to remind me immediately. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. Well, a, a praise one that Marilyn has. Uh, you know, people that can can rise up and and help take care of her and help her. Uh, in her place where she's staying in her lifestyle here and watch over her. Thank you. And that Marilyn would make wise decisions. Yes. Uh, okay, thank you. Rosie and Teo uh, have lost their lost their baby, and uh, prayer for the whole family that God would bring comfort in this. Which family is that, Tim? S P L A W N. Out here with so much life, church, family, nothing personal, back there. So um, I'm just having a hard time right now. And also for the uh, tug of war that is going on uh, with Carter's heart. Okay. Um. Uh, keep in uh, uh, keep in prayer, Splon, who has passed away from COVID. Well, keep in prayer his his family that God would be glorified there, and keep Carter and his health um, definitely in your in your prayers. Yes, spiritual and physical as well. Good, absolutely. Thank you, Judy. Jeff and Pat. Um, Judy would like to have prayer for her brother who's dying, Jeff, uh, but also prayer for his wife and children, for his wife, Pat, and for his children. And that, that certainly there'd be comfort brought there, but that his quality of life, I would say, right? His quality of life, God would, would keep that up. Oh, oh, uh, in, we'll ask Linda first, okay, Linda, Linda, go ahead. Prayer and unity for our country this week and going forward. Country, right. Peace, peace, and 
peace and unity for our country going forward. I'll turn it over to the other room. Okay. And then back to you, Amanda. Right. Yeah, so going on from Linda's prayer that we may have humility and we may be able to move forward in the next days, which a lot is going to happen in our country, but also for a daily bread that, that both the jury may get that into the hands of someone who could really use it and be blessed by it and that we all may seek to be light to, to those around us. And I just uh, wanted to a prayer request that I was thinking for the Halloween outreach, how many people, I mean, there may have been 500 plus that stopped, but there was probably that many more that walked by and just that the light of Christ may be what was seen as we just stood out there and offered, uh, offered love. And for those who picked up any of the information that was put out there, uh, that they would read that and it would be a seed planted. So... And uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, a prayer for everyone who has COVID or, or maybe if they're not even sure that they will get better and that they will uh, get better quickly and not have any lasting sickness. Kathy? Um, I'd like to um, ask for prayers for healing for uh, Ruth Street and also for Lonnie, and they both have brain cancer. Luke was the first one? Luke Svee. Luke Svee and Lonnie. And okay, Luke Svee and Lonnie. L-A-N-I. L-A-N-I, okay. They both have brain cancer. Yeah, we'll pray for that. Is uh, any treatment they're receiving, wisdom for the doctors and for their peace and comfort as well. Go ahead, Katie. Prayer for healing for Okay. Yeah, and back pain uh, that Katie is experiencing, that she may get relief from that and heal from that. And I know there's, it seems to be something that there's a lot of people suffering with joints and difficult things. It may be because we're getting older, but I, I uh, think it's just one of those things that uh, the enemy would use to keep us down that we may not and may be able to be a witness. Any, anyone else? Okay, Tim, back to you. Thank you, Michael. Amanda. Uh, Annie Colby and Marlene Sprague, of course, haven't been able to come to church, and um, they are grateful for watching online. And um, they just wish they could come and wish they were, you know, of health um, to be able to come. Um, Annie specifically with her back um, hurting, you know, she can only sit so long and walk so long, and, and she's kind of resolving that she's just going to have pain the rest of her life, and she just has such a a precious attitude, and Marlene Sprague also has just a positive attitude, and they both just have a joy for life. Um, and even though they're, you know, kind of isolated and have a little bit of connections with neighbors or family, um, I don't know. Just prayer for them, for their hearts, for their health, um, and maybe maybe people might be inspired to connect more with them through calling or, or letters. Good, thank, thank you. Um, prayer for Annie Colby. Um, certainly the Lord will bring her health and comfort. And uh, I'd say the, the same for Marlene, but also that it'd be a good connection with the community around them that people would be able to come in, that they wouldn't be or feel alone. Anyone else? Yeah, Jury, go Marian? ahead. And I'll, I'll bring it. Um, the prayer for Ashley's dad to get a kidney. Right? Yes. Michael, I heard you. Yeah, go ahead, Jaree. Um, I ran into Sarah, a friend, an old friend of uh, Nancy Buck um, today, and she reported that Nancy Buck is in a nursing home with hmm. dementia and really has quite advanced and doesn't really recall people. Um, so I'm getting her address um, from Sarah, and we'd love to share prayers for Nancy Buck. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so to keep Nancy Buck in prayer, uh, a friend that spoke with Jury uh, shared that she has advanced dementia and is in a nursing facility. So Jury is going to try to get her information, but apparently she's not able to recognize or remember people that she knows. So mm. just keep Nancy Buck in prayer that she may still be a light in, in that, but as she had always sought to be. Is that everyone on your side, Mike? Yes. Let's turn our hearts, and minds, our whole being to the Lord right now as we go before the Lord of creation in prayer. Holy Father, we praise your name. We praise you, Lord, that you are king of creation. It's all yours. You made it. Everything we belong, belongs to you. Our very breath is because of you. Lord, I pray that you would bless us this day and hear us. And Lord, I pray for myself, and I believe it for everyone else to pray for themselves, that as you hear these prayers, that you would forgive me my sins. You'd cleanse me. That these, this would be a prayer of a righteous man, not my own righteousness, but the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask, as always, that your will will be done in our lives here and, that, and within this church, that we would know what it is, that you would tell us, that we would grow in unity, in love with each other, but also in you, that this church would be an incredible light for Jesus Christ, shining into, certainly in the community, but into our culture, into all the lives around us, people at work that we work with or, or go to school with, that there would be an obvious light of Jesus Christ. That many would come here and find the truth, find Jesus Christ, find salvation and growth in you. Lord, I pray for uh, Lee, uh, Lee Ann's uh, sons who, who have COVID, that you know, we know you are a God who brings healing. And so we'd ask for a healing for those boys, but also that they would resist the COVID strain. Lord, and I would pray over all this whole COVID thing going around, Lord, that, that you who can change cultures, change many things, Lord, that you would just eradicate the COVID problem, Lord, that you would just cleanse the world of, of that disease, Lord. And, and we pray that humbly, knowing that, that you are God over all. I pray, Lord Father, for um, I praise you that that uh, there are people gathering together to help Maryland, and pray that there would be continual help there. But also, as these people come in, as they bring help, that that she would be a great witness for you, Lord. That she would have her words of wisdom, and you'd give her opportunity upon opportunity to offer those great words of wisdom in you. Bless her in this. I pray for Rosie and Teo, who's lost a baby, where there's such, such great sadness, such grief, Lord. I pray that you would be with them and bring them comfort and, and remind them always that you know, that you care, and that you hold them and that baby dear. I pray that, that you'd pray with, uh, for, uh, that you'd be with the family of Splon who has passed from this COVID, that you'd, you'd uh, bring them the, the, comfort that only you can bring, Lord, in, in any kind of grief. I pray that you would uh, be with Carter and bring healing to his heart and bring him uh, spiritual healing too, where there's so often we have um, trouble, so often doubt, so often things arise that just can kind of shatter our whole foundation, Lord. But I pray you'd remind him that you are the unshatter unshatterable foundation. But also be with Marion, who is strong in you. Lord, uh, help her to also give words to Carter that also would, would um, be a great blessing to him, Lord. And I pray that you touch her, bless her, and, and also be with Ashley, Father, as, as uh, she goes through her time uh, and that her dad, you know, with her dad, that he had, you'd find him the, the kidney that, that uh, he needs to have. I pray for Judy's brother who, who is dying, Lord, that you would be with him and bring him comfort. I mean, there is great joy in knowing that he's saved. But, Lord, still the grief occurs. There's still the sadness there and that you'd be with his wife and children also. Um, I pray 
for this country. As all around, things just seem to be going to pieces that, that you would be with us. Lord, your children who love you, we want you here. We want you in our schools. We want you in our, in our hospitals, in our courts. Lord, we want you to reign and, and rule over us. Remember us in this and help us to be strengthened. May the Christian community rise up to show that we love our enemy. Those who would persecute us, Lord. Those who would be angry at us, that we would have them in our prayers. And that there would be an obvious love for you, Lord God. I also um, uh, uh, pray for uh, uh, Katie. You'd bring healing to her uh, back pain, Lord, and bring her strengthening there. That that really the joy of the Lord would be obvious in her in her uh, in her actions and in her life. I pray a great blessing for Annie and Marlene, Lord. That uh, Annie Colby and Marlene Sprague. You'd certainly bring health and quality of life there, but but they too would be able to, to uh, speak to the people who come visit them. And they would be able to, to articulate the joy of the Lord, even though they're confined in where they are, Lord. And even though there's some pain there, but they'd still be able to show people that the joy of the Lord is further and goes deeper than our physical feelings. I pray, Lord, finally for uh, Nancy Buck, Lord, that you would bring comfort there. As she has, as so often people do, that sometimes they lose their identity, Lord, but that, that she would somehow remember that her identity is in you, Lord, and that, that you would bring comfort even in her moments here. Be with us in this, Lord. Be also with our unsaved loved ones who, who uh, need your glory. They need your help. And sometimes walls are built up. Sometimes there's there's... They just don't want to even hear, Lord. I just pray that you would open up their hearts and, and bring your salvation. I pray this, and I pray a great blessing on us, this community of believers, this family, that certainly again and again we would grow closer in you, that our worship would be true, real, and deep, and growing. Bless us, Lord, and, and bless Adrian as he, as he brings this sermon to us now. Open up our hearts and minds. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray this. Amen. Amen. Hey, Mike, do you mind coming back and uh, praying since you kind of, yeah, perfect. I was just thinking, I don't know when you're actually leaving, Chris, but I know that you're headed out pretty soon, and I thought we could lift up Chris in prayer and trust that God would go with him as he seeks what the next adventure is. I don't know if you want to fill me in, Chris, or Mike in any ways that we can be praying for you as you head out. Okay, for sure. So, Mike, I don't think you heard that, but just pray for Chris as for clarity as he as he moves and as he um, looks forward towards the next step. He's taking a word I can't say the as for the military test as as fad is that how you say it? I don't even know. Sorry, Chris. Um, and uh, as he takes that test and as he kind of sorts out what the Lord has for him as he serves. Um, in the military. So do you mind praying for him, Mike? No, I'd be glad to pray. Thank you. Oh, Lord, we do lift up Chris, and we thank you for the time that we've been able to spend with him, and we just pray that the, uh, the future that lies before him will be one that's filled with you and the ability to be a light, and we pray for his uh, ability to do well on this test and to figure out exactly the direction <clears throat> excuse me, that you are leading him. <clears throat> Sorry, frog. You are leading him to go as he moves into the, the next section of where you are bringing him, Lord. And I just pray that for him and for each one of us, that we may seek to be a light in whichever way you lead. And the choices we make will magnify your name. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you for, for Chris this morning and for all the things that you are doing in each one. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thanks. Mike, can you do another favor for me and shut that microphone off? You just hold the button that's kind of green 
on the side. That'd be awesome. If you want to turn, we're going to be in Ephesians this morning, uh, chapter 1, verses 15 and 18. I invite you to turn there if you would like. And while you do that, I get to tell you a little tale from way back or for back in my day, um, summer of 1999. The Lord had me join a mission team with the goal of building, uh, constructing literally with our hands and establishing an outdoor adventure based ministry. Uh, the leaders of our team of about 20 folks had a passion to merge their love for the Lord, their skills in team building, um, and their love for the outdoor education and the hearts for the people of Romania. So that was our destination. Our team was to construct a low and a high ropes course. If you're not familiar with those, you could probably Google it. It's basically, it's like wires in the woods and, you know, different challenge elements. Um, students nowadays are pretty familiar with them. Like you have to walk across a log that's 40 feet in the air. I mean, you're tied to something, but anyways, that's a side note. But so these, um, of course, on our journey, we had all kinds of challenges and setbacks, like any missions journey. It was for an entire summer, so there's plenty of room for that. Um, our team constructed the low and the high elements of the course. We lived in the woods, literally in tents. We cooked our meals over the fire. We worked hard all day long. We carried lots of heavy wires and did lots with chainsaws. Um, other people did stuff with chainsaws. That's not one of my skill sets. Uh, I can use a chainsaw, but usually it turns out bad. That's uh, that. They probably should have taught me, actually. Um, so we worked hard. We laughed a lot. We sat around the fire. And in general, we smelled really bad, to be honest. A few of us were given the, the privilege of leading the first Romanian team development activity. So the first group, we were given this privilege. And with translators, um, we gave them small challenges. You start off real small and kind of build up to these bigger, higher elements. So we started off with some real easy challenges, or not necessarily easy, but the smaller ones, the safer ones, I guess you could say. And um, it's helpful to know that at this time in general, uh, Romania was not exactly like, um, um, there was like this attitude of, of distrust. They didn't trust one another. They had been in a culture where um, people would like turn them in. They were never sure if someone was, um, if someone were going to turn them into the authorities. So there was kind of this general attitude of mistrust, which I believe is partly why our leaders felt called to this area to bring trust development activities and ultimately not just trusting one another, but trusting the Lord. Um, and, uh, so we kind of were coming into this experience knowing that this was a reality. So all these activities and all these group initiatives were designed to kind of help, um, encourage attitudes of trust and ultimately to apply it to what was called Viazza Normal, which is just like normal life. Viazza is just the Romanian word for life. So on a particularly memorable day during our training exercises, our team um, led a group through an activity that we call the wind in the willows. And maybe if you've done some of this stuff, you've seen it before. So basically someone stands in the middle, they stand real firm and they kind of like close their eyes and they lean and they fall around this circle of people willing to to catch them and kind of bounce them around the circle. And you could start really close. Like often that's the way you begin because you get nervous and then you're just a little bit and then it gets further and further. And ultimately you actually like lay the person down, um, all of your hands holding on to them and they're stiff as a board. And then you pick them up in the air and this is the wind and the will part. Some people love this. So their eyes are closed. They don't really know where they are. And you just kind of So that's how it's supposed to go, right? Now, this particular day, that was not exactly the way it was, went. Um, the group did, you know, the first participant, the first willing person stepped in and they did, they did the, all that we said. And then they lifted them up in the air. And I don't know how they did this because they didn't communicate. But all of a sudden, all like eight of them started running with the person in the air as high as they could hold them straight for some bushes. And they chucked the person who had their eyes closed into the bushes and it's okay to laugh because it's like hard not to you're like this is the exact opposite of what we're shooting for here so instead of nicely of course they all laughed their heads off except for the person that was chucked into the bushes um lovingly i guess you could say that they were chucked into the bushes they were living mad 
And the leaders were like, what do we do with this one? It was clear evidence, clear proof that there was a lack of trust for one another, that there was good reason that they shouldn't, they didn't have this natural trust and, and faith. They dis displayed it clearly. And I think it's important to recognize, like, I have many reasons to praise the Lord. The leaders stayed there in that country. That was their plan all along. We built the ropes course, and they have done this for 20 years now. And God has used that ministry to transform minds and hearts. And not just in Romania, because they've also created a training program that now goes around the world and has helped other areas that struggle with this attitude of trust to care for them and help them. As we consider Paul's declaration of praise and prayer for the followers of Jesus in Ephesus, may we remember that the Holy Spirit has worked in amazing ways as people have grown in the faith of the Lord Jesus and their love towards all the saints. So our experience in Romania is a reminder of what not to do, I guess you could say. So we're going to read about the people of God in Ephesus that had a different mindset. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this morning. Um, thank you for those experiences in our life that uh, shock us sometimes, surprise us, and are certainly memorable, Lord. I pray that this morning um, it would really just draw us closer to you, to remind us that you are trustworthy, that you are faithful, that you are able, and that we um, have the privilege of walking with you, the privilege of seeing the ways that you work, seeing the ways that uh, you move in lives, and we just pray that you would be glorified. We thank you for being a mighty God. In Jesus' name, amen. So Ephesians 1, I think I got to turn this camera on again. Hey, can you look up there if you can do that thing, though? Oh, I love technology. I don't know if it's going to work. I think we're on YouTube, at least, but we're not on Facebook, so my apologies. I'll... Figure that out later. Ephesians 15 to 18. For this reason, because I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. Have the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you? What are the glorious riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? Now, I, it's so difficult because remember, um, this is written as a letter. So it's all intended to flow together. So it's, it's, I find it really important to reference the fact that Paul just had an avalanche of praise. The, the verses before this were filled with rejoicing in our mighty God and rejoicing in all that he has done. And in fact, here in verse 15, in both the New International Version and the ESV, in, uh, English Standard, it begins with, for this reason. So anytime, you know, it's kind of like the word therefore. It pulls us back to what has just gone on. And so for this reason, Paul starts this out. He points out that his 200 plus word um, breathless sentence beforehand is still relevant to the following information. It's all one thought. So verse 15 I don't know what's wrong, Asen. Don't worry about it. It doesn't seem to be working. Sorry. Sorry out there in everywhere land because I love technology. Paul clearly has a great care. Oh, in verse 15, let's reread that. Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere. So Paul clearly has a great care for the saints in Ephesus. He has heard of their faith. He's seen their faith in action, their faith in the Lord Jesus, and constantly gives thanks to them and remembers them in his prayers. I expect that while the followers of Jesus in Ephesus were not perfect, since all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, it is their faith in the risen Savior and the evidence of the work of the Holy Spirit that brings great thanksgiving to Paul's prayers. The word faith can be thrown around in a kind of a cavalier way. While we don't often think, um, think about it, we live much of our lives putting our faith, our trust in people, in things, in our circumstances. We build our lives um, on, this, on this, on this faith, trusting that they will go the way we expect them to go. 
So I have faith that when I turn the key in my vehicle, and maybe you do too, that it's just going to roar to life. That's literally at this point how it sounds. It roars to life. I have faith that when I do that, it's going to happen. Of course, there's going to come a day where I'm in a wicked rush or I'm in the middle of nowhere and that baby ain't turning on especially because it has almost 200,000 miles on it at this point. So the chances are growing daily that it's not going to turn on. But we put our faith in all sorts of things, in people, in jobs, in, in inanimate objects. The reality is that everything outside of the Lord will eventually leave us stranded, will eventually break our trust. Faith, as it's used here in Ephesians, is the Greek word. Hopefully none of you are Greek scholars because I'm going to mess this up. Pistas. i got to be careful how I say that too. Which is used in the King James Version 244 times, and it means persuasion, a moral conviction of religious truth or of truthfulness of God or a religious teacher. And I like this part, especially reliance upon Christ for salvation. So that's faith, especially reliance upon Christ for salvation. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, if you've ever, that's one of my favorites. When it often comes to mind when it comes to this attitude of trust. It's one that you sh I encourage you to put into your memory. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. The only solid place for us to put our trust, our full faith, is in the Lord, resting in the salvation that is has been given in Christ. It's in this truth and this truth alone that we're not going to be let down. You won't be left stranded. You won't be chucked in the bushes. Those in Ephesus had put their faith in Christ and trusted the things they had learned and been told. They believed that Jesus was who he claimed to be, the Messiah, the rescuer, God in flesh, who had come to earth lived, taught, healed, and loved those he was with. He loved those he was with. You see that as you read the scriptures about what Jesus does. Ultimately, to give his life on the cross, to pay the debt that we owed for our sins. He raised again, defeating death, ultimately to go to heaven, to prepare a place for God's people. And in that, we should praise the Lord. 1 Peter 1, 18 to 25 it's a little chunk of scripture, but it's a beautiful reminder of, of what God has done. For you know that God had paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. It was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value, right? We see the stocks come and go, but it was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. God chose him as our ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, he has been revealed for your sake. Through, through Christ, you have come to trust in God and you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. You were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love for each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. As the scriptures say, people are like grass. Their beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And that word is the good news that was preached to you. We've been given this great news. We've been given offered life. Question for us today is, are we ready to put our trust, our faith fully in what we've been offered? Are we, as the body of Christ, ready to put our faith in our mighty God? Or are we going to be hesitant like the next person in that group that was going to get lifted up? I'd be hesitant, wouldn't you? The first person got chucked. But we've been given this solid example of a Savior who was the same yesterday, today, and forever. Are we ready to surrender our ways to his ways, to seek to live through the power of the Holy Spirit, the life that is offered to us in Christ? Are we ready to be the next one to step in and say, okay, I trust, I'm ready to go. 
I'll see how this wind in the willow thing take where it takes me. Paul continues to speak of the love that the Ephesians display for God's people everywhere. Love is yet another word that can be used in many settings. Whether it's great love for your favorite ice cream, any favorite ice cream, you know, chocolate, vanilla, mint, mint chocolate chip, yeah. Whether it's our favorite ice cream or our TV show, perhaps our love for the colors of the fall leaves or one's love for family or friends. We use the word love to describe our thoughts and feelings for many different things, don't we? Love it's, as it's used here is the Greek word agape. Thankfully, I've heard that one a few times. So agape, which is love that is affectionate, a gentle feeling of fondness or liking, benevolence, the quality of being, uh, well-meaning, kindness, love, agape. R. Kent Hughes explains the love the Ephesians as thoughtful. Now, look, this guy uses a word I don't even, I've never even heard. Volitional. Volitional. It means relating to one's will. Maybe you hear that all the time or use it. Uh, purposeful love that wills to love the unlovely. The very love of God himself. They looked out for each other, bearing each other's inadequacies and eccentricities. Eccentric, eccentricities. That's it. Eccentricities. Woo! and sins in love. They, they cared for one another, even in their differences, even in their uniqueness. They lived out Jesus' new command, a commandment I give to you, that you love one another. The city of Ephesus knew this, and as a result, many had turned to Christ. This faith in the Lord Jesus and their love for all the saints was evident to Paul and to those in the community. It was clear that the believers in Ephesus were in Christ, which is a phrase we've spent a bunch of time on the last week. For it is in Christ that we are identified as God's own children. And the Ephesians were not just calling themselves Christ followers, but it was clear that they were actually in Christ, that they had been changed, that they were united, that they were his children. Their faith and love leads Paul to a posture of incredible gratitude and prayer. So verse 16 says, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly. Throughout scripture, we often find Paul praying for the believers and using this term like constant, always, never ceasing. He uses that phrase a bunch. Like in Romans 1, 9, it says, God knows how often I pray for you. Day and night, I bring you and your needs in prayer to God, whom I serve with all my heart by spreading the good news about his son. And Colossians 1, 3 we always pray for you, and we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There seems to be a persistence in Paul's prayers, doesn't there? Perhaps it's because he knows how essential it is that they are in Christ. For Paul has experienced the power of God at work in his life and enjoys seeing how the Spirit is moving in the lives of those he has ministered to. 1 Timothy 1, 12, 14 speaks of Paul's recognizing of his own brokenness. It says, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me, Paul, the strength that he considered me faithful, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Prayer is essential. If you get nothing else from this today, that prayer is essential to those who are in Christ. Even all, as Paul speaks of his broken and sinful life that was, has been redeemed in Christ, we too are offered this gift of mercy and grace in Jesus. Will you consider praying to receive that gift, that redeeming grace today? Prayer is the means by which we surrender our own will our own ways, and communicate our utter dependence on the Lord. And we are offered a, this beautiful privilege of prayer. John Onawakawan, messed that name up, in a book called Prayer, How Praying Together Shapes the Church, explains that prayer is breathing. That prayer is breathing. To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing which is a quote that he attributes. He actually doesn't know the origin. It's either Martin Luther or Martin Luther King Jr. But he continues, he says, breathing is a metaphor for Christian prayer. 
It captures so much of what prayer should be. It reminds us that prayer is something essential to our existence. Prayer is a matter of seeking and following the Father as, he, as, our, as if our lives depend on it, because they do. God's word reinforces that prayer is essential and powerful. So Ephesians 6, 18, prayer in the spirit, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. James 5, 16, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that, that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. 1 Timothy 2, 1, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all the people. Ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them. Philippians 4, 6, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. And so from the day we heard, oh, this is Colossians 1, 9, and so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And one more, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. You might actually know this one by heart. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. It's just a sample of the scriptures that encourage us to come to the Father in prayer because he cares, because he is trustworthy, because he is mighty. I was reading Tom Rainer's newest book this past week, The, the Post-Quarantine Church. I don't know if we're past the quarantine portion yet, but The Post-Quarantine Church. A portion jumped out to me with regards to the ministry of prayer. prayer. It says, shortly before Jesus ascended to heaven, he told his followers, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That was it. No other instructions, no strategic plan, no further clarity of purpose. So what did they do when they didn't know what to do? They prayed. The Bible indicates that the prayers of the early church were powerful because the people were of one mind. They all met together and were constantly in prayer. So here we are, brothers and sisters, reminded of the truth of the essential nature of prayer. It's kind of a basic Christian doctrine that we have this privilege to come before the Father in prayer. But it helps to be reminded at times that the Holy Spirit is able to do more than we can even imagine. It helps to reset our, our brains and say, God can do this, even if it doesn't make sense. He is able. Are we ready? Are we willing to surrender our ways to the, to the Lord's ways? Are our minds fixed on the unity that we have in Christ as part of the kingdom of God? Paul prayed unceasingly for the people of God to hold fast to their faith in Christ and to, the love, the, and to love the body of Christ. Verse 17 and 18 give, give us insight to how Paul prayed. So this is how Paul prayed for these Christians in, in Ephesus, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. Paul isn't holding back his prayers for the believers in, in Ephesus. He's praying big for them. His focus is not so much on their material needs, rather on spiritual wisdom and insight that they might grow in their knowledge of God. I think this is an important point to consider because we often pray for material or, or physical needs, and I, I think we should. I think that the scriptures indicate that we should be praying for these things. But let's also be praying for spiritual wisdom and insight that we might have a deeper understanding of who God is and all that he has done. So consider what direction our prayers generally take. Do we consider our own needs or are we thinking of the needs of others? Do we consider 
What do we consider to be the greatest needs? Perhaps the fact that Adrian has a 200,000 mile van isn't the greatest need in his life, but that he might know God more. That's a greater, far greater need than whether or not that vehicle is going to fire up one day or another. It's amazing that when Jesus taught his disciples how to pray in Matthew 6, there's, a, there's an incredible corporateness about the prayer. I don't know if that's a real word. Corporate focus of the prayer. And we see that ultimately it's about the kingdom of God rather than my own kingdom. So Matthew 6, 9 to 13, you might be familiar with it. It says, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So it's not just about me. It's not about my way, but it's about God's kingdom. And as we grow in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit in knowledge and depth of insight, our ways ultimately will fall in line with his ways. Hughes states, when you learn that prayer is not about getting God to accomplish our plans, but about gladly submitting ourselves to his, we will find that when we turn his plans into our prayers, they are constantly being answered. It's kind of a mouthful, but basically it's changing our minds to be so much in tune with what the Lord has in mind that of course those prayers will come to be. To be clear, we are able to realize that our great need is for spiritual wisdom and insight in the knowledge of God. All other things seem to fall into place when that becomes the priority. And Paul's passion is that they would know God and God alone more. What an incredible gift to pray for our brothers and sisters, that they might know God more. And as we pray to this end, we will be reminded that he is in control of all things that he is trustworthy. He is not that scary group that's going to chuck us into the bushes when we're not paying attention. He is trustworthy, that he will do what he says. A portion of our church covenant reminds us of a beautiful calling that we have as a body of Christ to pray for one another, to pray for one another, and to seek unity in Christ. This is what it states, bound together in fellowship of faith, with all who confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we will pray and work for a spirit of unity among all Christians. Our prayers for one another can move us to a place of having our eyes and our hearts opened to what God has, God's kingdom, rather than our own, rather than our own perspective or desires. Richard Cokeen says that through the ministry of God's spirit speaking, through the living words of scripture, we actually get to know God himself. It's our supreme privilege as Christians, not just to know about him, but to know him personally. J.R. Packer says, we are cruel to ourselves if we try to live in this world without knowing about God, whose world it is and who runs it. The world becomes a strange and mad, painful place and life in it is a disappointing and unpleasant business. For those who do not know God, disregard the study of God and you send it yourself to stumble and blunder through life blindfolded. As it were, with no sense of direction, no understanding of what surrounds you. This way you can waste your life and lose your soul. Our aim in studying the Godhead must be to know God himself better. Our concern must be to enlarge our acquaintance, not simply with the doctrine of God's attributes, but with the living God whose attributes they are. So may we dig into God's word. So I'm nailing on two things, spending time in prayer and spending time in God's word. May we dig into God's word in a sense, in an attitude of prayer with a desire for our prayers in the weeks and days ahead to be rich with joy and compassion for one another. For we are to be united in Christ. Therefore, we have a deep interest in one another's growth. If we're united, I want each of you to, to grow in your knowledge and insight of the Lord in so many ways, to a deeper level. Are we ready to dig in and praying for one another corporately? 
I want to encourage you in a practical way this week. So this is something, you, if you're a note taker, or if you're just going to forget this, this is fine. You can look at it later. But I want a, a practical way this week to spend time praying through verses 15 to 18, over and over for our church family, the body of Christ that is gathered here um, and some online in Bar Harbor, to perhaps even choose to be specific. You can pray it kind of as it's written, or you can be specific and pray people for people by name as the Spirit brings them to mind. Um, or you can find a church directory and pray through that by name too. So here's an example, and I'm choosing the name Amanda because it's my wife, but it's also a bunch of else's name, people's names. So I'm going to give you the example of what this would look like. It's not too hard. I, so this is uh, 15, actually it might be 16, I'm not sure. So I do not cease to give thanks for Amanda, remembering her in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give Amanda the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of her heart enlightened, so that she might know what is the hope of which, she, which he has called her, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. So take it and just put some names in there and pray, not just to check off a list. Well, Adrian said I better pray for somebody's name. If I, maybe he's going to ask me next week. I don't know. But to pray with that deep passion that we together, individually and corporately, might know more and more this mighty God that we serve. E.M. Bound says, our prayer needs to be pressed and pursued with an energy that never tires, a persistency which will not be denied, and a courage that never fails. It's easy to grow weary. It's easy to spend one morning in prayer, and then the next three, you get caught up in something else. But to be persistent, to seek that our Father day by day. May we pray in great faith of our Lord Jesus Christ and with a tremendous love that comes from the Holy Spirit for one another. Let's pray. Lord, we, we ask for you to be known more and more in our lives, that we might chase after you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Forgive us for the times where we get caught up in us and help us to get caught up in what you are doing in the ways that you are working. I pray, Lord, that we are reminded of your tremendous care and love for us, that we would be in awe of all that you've done. And then when the times get challenging, we would cling to you. And when the times get good, we would cling to you with everything that we've got. I pray for my brothers and sisters in, in this space that we, each of us, would have a hunger and a desire to know you more. And that your Holy Spirit would make yourself known to us so that we might seek you and trust you. I thank you that... And I trust that you will work, for you are faithful, and you care for us. As we head forth into this week, may we head forth with a joy and a, and a life that is in you. In Jesus' name, people said, amen. The benediction for this day is the same as it has been, Romans 15, 5 to 6. May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, help you help us live in complete harmony with each other, as is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. Then all of us can join together in one voice, giving praise and glory to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a great week. As you leave, please do so in an orderly manner. Remembering to care for each other, do your best to maintain social distancing, wear your fancy face covering. Rodney, I saw yours. It's pretty fancy. And uh, and if, if you desire to fellowship, to just try to stay free of the hallways and doorways and maintain uh, proper care for one another. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Bye.
Social distance.